Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to be taking a look over here at the Bitcoin price chart. We'll also peek over there at the Ripple XRP price chart. I'm going to try to tie a lot of things together today. We're also going to be taking a look over at the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the US Dollar Currency Index, or the DXY. Obviously, we have started the week off red. Over the weekend, we had looked at the inverse structure of Bitcoin, and when it reached out to 65,000, I have it flipped upside down here to show if this is a Wyckoff structure, if what we have now is also a Wyckoff structure, the incredible similarities that were taking place in here, looking to see if price would hold right there at that 702 retracement at 34,100. Clearly, <laughs> it hasn't. We haven't broken to new lows, but it hasn't held those retracement levels either, taking all of them out, even the 786 right there at 33,300. Last week, we also did talk about what XRP looked like when it had low consolidation when we were at that 22 and a half cents stuff back in September, October, and November of last year. And how if we were doing something similar to that, that we would only be in an area just like this right in here. Uh, that received the most negative comments of a video I've gotten in a long time. People did not like that one. But in the end, the price is still ranging, right? New lows haven't been set and no retracements have happened. So it's just been stuck really, really low. And well, if you make your way onto Twitter, you're going to see people telling you we're gloomed and doomed or that we're mooned and everywhere in between. It's just uh, your head can spin by going on Twitter to see what's out there. You have Barry Silbert from Grayscale giving mixed messaging on what's going on out here. You have Michael Berry. You may know him from the big short that maybe was made after him about predicting the housing market crash. He's out there throwing out tons of fear. And well, at the same time this morning, we have the announcement from Michael Saylor that MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 13,000 Bitcoins for $489 million. And so you have Kathy Woods telling you that everything is great in the bull market and that the bull market is going to keep raging on. You have Michael Saylor telling you that the Bitcoin is going to keep raging on. You have Michael Berry and Barry Silbert telling you, nope, things are in trouble. Very difficult to be a retail investor right now and trying to get information on what's happening with the market, especially since there's now a lot of distrust because what happened up in here was a very, very strong media campaign to pull retail investors into Bitcoin, the whole laser eyes movement, all of that stuff that happened, and then the prices fell. But at the same time, the people who are now pushing fear and concern and worry, well, they were also people who were pushing excitement up at the tops. Grayscale was buying Bitcoin at those prices up in there. Michael Berry was warning of inflation up in there. And well, Michael Saylor was wrongly purchasing Bitcoin up in there. So from a fundamental perspective and from a narrative perspective, it's very difficult to be able to draw any information, any draw a conclusion at all from anything anybody is saying. And there's also this big problem on being able to trust when anybody is really doing because the on-chain data shows that there was significant amounts of selling that were happening from the long-term holders while the whole laser eyes diamond hands marketing campaign was being run retail investors were getting dumped on that whole time then incorporate the questionable timing of all of the tesla things that happened well it's very, very difficult out there for anybody right now to be able to draw a conclusion of what is the future of Bitcoin and what is the future of cryptocurrency in this current environment that we're in right now. The market is in complete disarray. Retail investors are in complete disarray. Pessimism, toxic nature, extreme fear, prolonged extreme fear, and prolonged suppressed prices that haven't even shown any type of retracement rally to provide any type of real relief. But one of the things I've always done on this channel is I've always talked about how I always pay way more attention to the charts than I do to what the narratives are out there. And we could see why those narratives can be so complex and confusing and manipulate your mind and whatever, you know, whatever you're thinking. All the narratives out there, all of them combined, have left everybody in complete disarray if you're focusing on any of the narratives. Is inflation really here? Is inflation not here? Is inflation transitory? Or is it just, you know, supply chain holdups? Or is it from the Fed printing so much money? Or is none of it real at all? Or are we going to rise interest rates? Ah, what do I think? 
What am I supposed to do? Well, what I do is I take a step back and I say, all right, what is the big picture of what I believe is happening in the market? Everybody has to have their own conviction. If you're just going at the whim of the moment, whatever the narrative is, you're always going to be getting wrong footed by what happens in the narrative. I still don't believe the narrative that Bitcoin's going above $100,000. I've stuck by that. I've said that through the whole Tesla stuff and the mix in the midst of all of the insane euphoria of what happened with Tesla. I've stood by that, that I don't think Bitcoin's going to above $100,000. I don't believe in the S2F model or whatever it is that says it's going to 288,000 or 135,000 this year, whatever it is. I don't buy any of that. I still believe that the top of Bitcoin's there somewhere between 72 and $85,000. That's my conviction. We haven't reached out to a full Fibonacci extension and we also have haven't reached out to the full fractal of what we've seen happening here in Bitcoin over the last several years. I know a lot of people are pointing to this and saying that we're in something like this or in this area right there. I don't believe that at all. I think the entire bear market of 2018 through 2020 was actually this right here. And we are approaching very close to our top, but we haven't hit it yet. We also have lots of things in the altcoin market that we haven't seen occur that we've seen happen at the top of each of the previous bull runs in which all segments of the market take off and the market really broadens out and everything has an opportunity to surge. We haven't seen that happen. It's been very narrow in which things went on massive bull runs, Ethereum and Dogecoin and Bitcoin. Otherwise, the rest of the market didn't really get an opportunity to go completely surging. There were a couple other ones out there like Binance coin, and I'm sure there's several other ones as well. But from a broader market perspective, we did not see that, right? We didn't see the whole market surge like we've seen happen at tops of previous bull markets. Also, in this fractal, when this happened, there was a 50% crash that took place in there before reaching out and hitting its very top. Well, what do you know? We have a more than 50% crash. I think it's a 53% crash that has happened here in Bitcoin, just like we had happened in the past. Not only that, this will be our third time to go this exact measure distance. This was our second time. This chart does not go back far enough, but the one prior to that was the same distance on the log scale. So mix in the fact that the Bitcoin price hasn't reached out to a full 4.236 extension. It hasn't reached out to what it typically reaches out to in full extensions of bull markets and that the alt season did not get broad enough to include everything in the alt season yet. I find it incredibly hard to believe that the top of Bitcoin or the top of crypto is already in. So I stick to that conviction that there's still more room for Bitcoin. In addition, I've spent way too much time in the last year discussing this rally prior to capitulation happening in Bitcoin and in the cryptocurrency market and to see that the total market cap did a perfect 4.236 extension with a large knockback from that area. What we've seen when this market does precisely this is that there is still one more massive surge that comes after that to shoot way up. So I've seen that we've had many charts that have done precisely this with the rejection come in precisely right there and then go on for the big final grand finale. We also don't have Bitcoin reaching out to a full 4.236 extension, nor has it reached out as far as it has in the prior bull runs. And so I say, you know what? It looks far more likely to me. We still have a very exciting future here in the cryptocurrency market. And then, of course, as you all know, with the total altcoin market cap, double tap, bull flag, breakout, back test, And well, we won't dive into that too much more today, but you guys know about it, that even these have a tendency to go up higher. We'll have to see how high that gets when the time comes. However, this as well has not reached out to a full 4.236 extension. So what's going on in the market right now, right? Suppressed prices, extreme fear, mixed narratives, distrust in media. Don't you wish all those things could happen at tops and just give you the opportunity to sell when the prices are higher? <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that, right? All that stuff happens at lows and at bottoms. Make you fearful and worry, worrisome when prices are low. Make you excited and euphoric when prices are high. But there's one thing that I've preached on this channel as well, is that I fully believe that the cryptocurrency market is tied to the stock market. For the last several years, there's always been this narrative of cryptocurrency is a non-correlated asset class to the stock market. And while I've made videos on that showing exactly how Bitcoin has performed in relation to the Dow Jones, and there's unquestionable evidence that cryptocurrency is fully tied to the stock market. Fully. 
and that there's a correlation between what's happening with the DXY or the US dollar currency index and what's happening in cryptocurrency. And as you can see, we've had this little pop that's taken place over the last week or two after the Federal Reserve came out and said that we are now starting to think about thinking about raising interest rates. Then their dot plot changed and it showed that, hey, it looks like by 2023, there'll probably be a couple of interest rate hikes. And well, people don't trust the Fed, right? You know, well, just a year ago, you told us it wasn't going to be anything until 2024. And then just, you know, six months ago, you told us one thing. And then now you're telling us a different thing. Then we're going to have to expect that when you come out in six months from right now, you're going to tell us something different again. And that even though you're telling us it's going to be late 2023 until it, we all have to anticipate that since your trajectory keeps pushing it forward and forward, that even 2023 probably isn't realistic. And that's probably going to be 2022. And who knows, maybe even late 2021, because we can't trust you. So now there's fear of her not being able to trust the Fed on when they're going to be raising interest interest rates, causing a, a run to the US dollar. We have lots of DXY experts out there right now saying we're breaking out, it's going to go much higher. But for me, a lot of it comes back to as well is what's going on with the stock market. What's going on with the Dow Jones? There's no question. Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, it's tied to the stock market, whatever the stock market is doing. Look at when the Dow Jones had this little reversal right here on May 10th. When did Bitcoin start plummeting to the downside? May 10th. So is the Dow Jones in free fall? Has the Great Depression begun? Or did we just have a little bit of an ABC correction take place over here in the Dow Jones and things are going to recover? These are a lot of the things that I'm looking at in order to build my own perspective and my own conviction of what I think is happening in cryptocurrency. What's my big picture of the world right now? Do I think we have reached the moment where everything is going to fall apart, including the stock market and everything, and we're going to have this deflationary madness and the U.S. dollar is going to just surge to record new highs? Because that's what will happen when a Great Depression does come. When the market does crash into oblivion, we're going to see the dollar fly. Just a month, a month and a half ago, I was talking about how when the dollar starts falling deeper and deeper, and I think it's, you know, the top of cryptocurrency that I will sell my cryptocurrency into U.S. dollars. And people will question me and they'll say, why would you buy the dollar? It's so weak. It's, it's just the most pathetic thing you could do is sell it into dollars. But that's what's going to happen. You're getting a little sneak peek right here of what happens with the dollar dollar and the strength of the dollar when the market pulls back. And so at some point, everybody's going to have to make the decision for themselves, right? Do you believe it's a Great Depression or do you not? For me personally, I don't think it is. I think this is just an ABC correction. I think the Dow Jones is going to go set new record highs and it's going to take cryptocurrency with it as well. And a lot of that ties back to what my belief has been throughout all of this craziness that has happened here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. When this big monster crash did come in, I was making YouTube videos during this time and through all of this and through all of this. And my conviction was that the Dow Jones would have a V-shaped recovery and bounce out of there because it was doing nothing more than a double tap back test and that it would recover and go higher. And at the particular phase that we're in within a bubble, because you better believe it, the Dow Jones is absolutely in a bubble. And when it crashes, it's going to be horrid and, and absolutely terrible. And I could see the Dow coming all the way back down to these price levels down in here. But the big question has to be, is it now? Or does the Dow Jones have to go absolutely euphoric and mad and crazy and to where people think, if I don't buy it, I'm getting left behind? Now, I don't know if it's going to go that high. That's just a freehand drawing. But if you were with my channel throughout all of this time period and us bouncing out of there and us recovering from C19 and the, the Dow setting new record highs and how I believe that that would happen the whole time, I still believe that the Dow Jones has to go even higher and that we're likely doing five waves to the upside and we just completed wave two. We're doing an ABC correction for wave two. There will be a wave three, four, and five. That is typically what happens after V bottoms come in, V shaped recoveries in stocks, and bubbles get printed and then collapse. Is that after the double tap back test V bottom breakout, you set five waves on top and then it's all over. We have just finished wave one, we're now wrapping up wave two, and then we're heading into wave three. Because right now, there's so much worry, there's so much fear out there that, hey, check it out, everybody's getting the opportunity to sell the top. Man, how lucky is that, that all retail investors that are all scared and worried, they all get the chance to sell the top. Good for them. Nope, that's not how it works. It wrong foots everybody when it finally does come. And nobody will believe that the top is in. Even after it's crashed, they'll think it's just a buy the dip opportunity. 
Here's a really good illustration of a V bottom breakout that happened with Bitcoin. Double tap back test in here and what it looked like when it broke out to the upside. And we can see that there were five waves taking it all the way up to the top. One, two, three, four, five. And that there was an ABC correction that took place. V bottom, break up, consolidation near the top, and then finally an ABC. Here's your Dow Jones, here's your double top. You break out your back test with your V bottom, consolidation near the top, break out, ABC. Same thing for Bitcoin. Double tap, break out, V bottom back test, consolidation near the top, ABC. Double tap back test, V bottom, consolidation, ABC. And so if we know that cryptocurrency is completely tied to the stock market, and if on May 10th, the Dow Jones starts an ABC correction, and at that same time, Bitcoin goes into a free fall, the big question is, is the Dow Jones done? Is the Dow Jones collapsing or is it recovering and going even higher? Because all retail investors just one month ago thought inflation was going to be crazy and that everything was going to go skyrocketing because the value of the dollar was going to fall. And then here we are. <laughs> Everybody believes Great Depression deflationary and that everything's going to zero, right? Or everything is crashing into oblivion and that the dollar is going to be the strongest thing in the world. How retail investors can have that sentiment shift happen so ridiculously fast requires this bigger, broader look at the markets and saying, what is the real trajectory of where everything is going and having conviction based on that. And that we've been talking so much about the double tap back test over there on the total altcoin market cap and all this talk of distribution showing up. You can see that same thing happening over here on the Dow as it came back into double tap back test and then recovered. Even Bitcoin in the time period that we're talking about back in 2017 with that V bottom back into the double tap back test, you can see the distribution of the same same style happening right in here, identical. But I've believed in that V-shaped recovery during the whole time. And if I think that the Dow Jones is going to go way higher and I know that the cryptocurrency is tied to the stock market, well, then guess what? I think cryptocurrency is going to go higher too. And that's my bigger, broader perspective. And so when I come onto my channel every day making videos, these are the things that are in the back of my mind. Stock market still has to go higher. Cryptocurrency is going to go higher as well. Stock market had a setback starting on May 10th. Hey, check it out. The cryptocurrency crash happened on May 10th. And well, is the Dow Jones going to crash significantly lower is the big question, right? If we're in a bear market, if we're in a prolonged bear market, you have to believe that the Dow Jones is too. And if you believe the Dow Jones is in a prolonged bear market and crashing to zero, you got much bigger problems than crypto right now. I don't think the people who sit there and scream that, you know, the Great Depression is coming really take into account what that would mean. And what I think it really is, is just people overreacting. And so while it's really uncomfortable out there, I still stick with my same convictions that I've had, that we need to reach out to a full 4.236 extension at a minimum, or the full extension of what we've seen in each of the previous bull markets. And that I still don't believe that 288,000, 135, or 100,000 are ever in the cards. I also don't believe that we're in the bear market yet. And that our consolidation that's happening over here in Bitcoin is just as brutally painful as what all of us had to go through when XRP consolidated above 22 cents back in September, October, and November of last year. And that the altcoins are all giving us a test of our conviction today, right? Everything going back and touching what those lows were just a couple of weeks ago. Bitcoin still hasn't broken into new lows. So today is one of those days where you kind of just hold on for dear life and close your eyes a little bit while there's all this red on the board. But I hope I showed you kind of what's going on in my mind and my perspective of everything. That's what I always carry with me throughout all of this. The second I think that, you know, the dollar is going to start flying to the upside, that the Dow Jones is going to crash. I mean, my tune's going to change entirely. You know, you know I'm in, and it's been this whole debate on whether or not I would continue doing the YouTube channel any longer once I thought everything was completely over and that you know i thought the stock market was going to crash and i thought the cryptocurrency was going to crash with it and all of that different stuff and we're just not there yet and uh, once i have that belief boy i you know i'm going to communicate it really strong but until then these are the things that i'm still seeing that the dow jones was doing a v bottom 
uh, double tap back test during the C19 sell off and that there's still a lot of room to go over there in the Dow. And with how connected cryptocurrency is to the Dow Jones and to the stock market, that I just have a very difficult time believing. Uh, that we would be entering into a long-term bear market considering the total market cap of crypto nailed that 4.236 extension based on the rally prior to capitulation in 2018. We have lots of charts to reference back to and what happened after those types of moments, how the big euphoria, big euphoric moment really comes after that and that there's still this big massive surge that's still yet to come. Um, and the Dow Jones also shows us that that seems likely as well, that there's still further room up to go in the Dow Cryptocurrency is connected to the Dow. We're just having a tough out a moment of which a correction started in the Dow on May 10th. And well, we saw what happened with crypto at that exact time. So toughen it through the rough time right now, but I have faith that things will recover. And otherwise, I hope that you guys had a great weekend. I hope that all the dads out there, I know the majority of the people who watch my channel are men. So I hope that you guys who are fathers had a wonderful Father's Day. And while we're starting this week off rough, please, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, things turn around this week and we can finish the week off strong. But all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Of course, if you'd like, you can check out my website, bcbacker.com. It's where I outline a lot of this stuff that we've talked about in the market, measuring these 4.236 extensions, studying over the previous bull markets that Bitcoin has had and what we've looked like in 2013 and how we're compared to right now. Talk about mathematics, percentages, my personal exit plans. Talk about a lot of educational stuff in here, how to set up your own charts and your own indicators and do your own stuff on TradingView and CoinTrader Pro. You could check that out on bcbacker.com. You could follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. Like I mentioned in my last few videos, if you've ever bought a domain on Unstoppable Domains, go check your account and see if you have promo credits in there. You should. You can use those to buy other domains for free at this point. You should have three times the amount of promo credits that you've ever spent at Unstoppable Domains. So you could use those to buy more domains. They're still running their promo through June 22nd. For every dollar that you do spend, you'll get three times promo credits after June 22nd. I have an affiliate link to Unstoppable Domains in the description of this video. And well, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's a tough day. Oh, hopefully tomorrow we come back and it's so much better. But we've got a tough through this time period right now. But of course, I will catch you guys all tomorrow. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.